right. Uh, my name is Todd Raymond. I want to thank everyone for attending and seeing a little bit about what's going on with TTIPs in the industry and where we're headed with uh, some of the changes as things go. We're going to take a little bit of time to go through uh, just some basics about TTIP and then a little bit of our product line and what some of the uh, priority items and, and uh, reasons for going with the alternative dips to iodine would be. Uh, so we're going to start out with a little history on PTIP. Uh, this was a slide that was done by uh, one of the members of the quality milk team for Cornell and a uh, little bit of information on the history of tips. Of course, we've been milking cows far longer than the 1900s, but basically that is when the thoughts of doing some sort of disinfecting or cleaning uh, to get things uh, a little better started. And you can see it really started in around uh, the 50s of getting into some of the different bacterial loads and information that was in there. So uh, shedding some light on positive impact of disinfecting the teats. So they started by just washing teats with a water and rag, uh, maybe some dish soap and cleaning agents, whatever they had to be able to clean things up with some basic starts. And in the 60s, uh, started with the other washes and was essentially the beginning of iodine starting to be used. Uh, first low, eight, low pH, first iodine dips, and it was a little irritating. So we worked into the 70s, the T-tip use increased. Or dip was used in other washes, so instead of just washing the teats, now an actual dipping method really starts to become prevalent. Uh, and in the 80s, started with some spraying and uh, powder dips were introduced and teat dip uh, conditioners, adding emollients, uh, pH and tea carriers, but changing some of the uh, effective products, making a better, better blend, less irritating product started in the 80s. In the 90s, we started with foam dips and a lot of barrier inter became introduced. And then in the late 90s and uh, early 2000s, chlorine dioxide, hydrogen peroxide really started to make their appearances uh, as cost effective dips for the hydrogen peroxide and as premium line for the chlorine dioxides. And as time has gone on, we've seen those products as well as many others continue to grow and grow and grow. So why are we dipping? Uh, we're dipping to clean for the removal of manure and debris picked up from the environment, or is it the condition to keep the teat skin in good condition, overcoming stress, milking process, weather, environment, whatever it might be, or is it to sanitize, removing that mastitis causing bacteria? So reason we're dipping, again, another slide from Rick Waters from Cornell, uh, had a very, did a very good job of laying this out with disinfect teat and provide teat skin conditioning agents. So we are doing both of those. And then what's the difference between disinfecting and sanitizing? Those are words that in our industry we tend to throw out is the same, but there is a difference between the two of them. So disinfecting, uh, we are destroy or inactivate bacteria and fungi and to sanitize is reducing microorganisms to a level considered safe by established parameters. Uh, the disinfecting generally takes an additional time frame to be able to get a full kill. And a lot of times here we are on the, the, the teat skin working to try and get this skin as disinfected as possible. So disinfect the skin of the teat and teat end or disinfect manure, organic matter on the teat. Uh, well, it's kind of hard to just disinfect that organic matter. Best bet is to get it off. So dips are designed to disinfect the teat skin, not the manure. Uh, we're disinfecting the wrinkles, crevices, cracks in the skin, working to get it as clean as possible. So the teat dip really is not a wash cleaning solution. We want to do as much of that working to wipe and to get as much of that manure off the teat and then use the teat dip for the most part for the killing agent. Yes, our dips are used in multiple varieties and multiple forms for this, 
uh, and, and we are cleaning with it, but that is not the ultimate goal. The cleaning is something we should be doing and then applying the dip. So the dip strip dip process of hitting the teeth dip with the, the dip and then trying to get all of that manure off, the less load we have on there, the better off we are. So uh, reading from the slide here, dips do contain surfactants, but the surfactants are designed to clean the teeth skin. And if the teats are dirty, they need to be cleaned prior to disinfecting. So if the teat dip is used to moisten organic matter and remove organic matter from the teat, then the teat itself must be disinfected after the organic removal. So dipping it again is definitely a good practice. It's hard to get all of that if you're loaded with manure to get that all done in one pass. And what's in a dip? You've got several components in a dip. There's a germicidal system, or the compound or parts that are killing the bacteria, uh, the antimicrobials that are in there, the skin conditioners, you got humectants and emollients. Uh, they're either helping to hold the moisture to the skin or they're smoothing the skin and helping respire the moisture or keep it away from it, uh, out of it that way. The um, thickeners, uh, allowing us to have all the different teeth tips that we have out there, have different ranges of thickeners in it, buffering agents as well, uh, helping to make the products of iodine and non-iodines gentler uh, by counteracting the chemical harshness. And the surfactant, those cleaning and wetting agents helping us to get that uh, product removed off of there. Again, once it's removed off, we do wanna make sure that we are still disinfecting with the T-tip again at that point. Uh, some of them have film forming polymers in them, our barrier dips, uh, having a, an actual coating that is covering and protecting that teat. And then, of course, we've got colors, dyes, pigments, uh, many tech, and all, all giving us all the different ranges of, of looks that we need for the different aspects of teeth dipping. And many of the technologies require careful balance with other formula ingredients, or they can lose their germicidal activity. So we do want to be careful if we are mixing things on, fly, on the fly on the farm uh, and putting things in that weren't intended. You can be doing uh, some damage and some harm to killing off uh, the germicides that are in there to, to do the work that needs to be done. So skin conditioning. Heat dips have uh, several different products in them for skin conditioning. A few of the ones that are possible to be here would be aloe vera. Uh, that's a moisturizer, aiding and healing minor skin injuries. Uh, lanolin has become a very popular one and, and really does a great job providing that protective barrier around the teeth skin, uh, preventing the evaporation of the natural water and restores the normal moisture balance of the skin. Uh, glycerin has been a primary use item for a number of years. Uh, it's a humectant, absorbs moisture from the air and deposits on the teeth skin. Uh, propylene glycol, also one that uh, is absorbing moisture and helping to give us a good uh, blend and condition. Uh, it, it also works well as an antifreeze. It's keeping that uh, skin wet in that sense. But if we're super severe, we need to make sure that we've got enough emollients on there to keep things from freezing. Uh, sorbitol has been used for years. And with the last year that we've had of skin conditioners and price changing uh, on the propylene glycols and glycerin, the prices of them have, have gone up uh, exponentially in price. Sorbitol was one that was used quite uh, sparingly in the fact that it was a little bit more expensive than glycerin. And now the tables have turned and glycerin has become a more expensive part of the, the formulation. So sorbitol has uh, started to replace glycerin in a lot of aspects for the skin conditioning. And it does it has some great healing properties, uh, very beneficial for the dry skin, cracked skin conditions, and works very, very well. Uh, the changes from sorbitol to from glycerin to sorbitol on a lot of the dips uh, really show better conditioning, better T dips, uh, and in a better package at an affordable price based on today's cost increases and such. <coughs> And then we have the uh, film forming products, the PVP, uh, and that will allow basically the holding in of water and such that way to keep that 
moisturing and conditioning working pretty well. So a few of the germicides and disinfectants, of course, iodine has been the primary uh, germicide disinfectant for T-tips for many, many years now. Um, and it, it has done very, very well. Chlorine dioxide has been around since the 90s and is growing in uh, great values, e even as more and more generations of this have come out with concentrate versions and such as well. For hexidines, known as being a very gentle dip, have been available and uh, also known for working well for herpes and warts. Uh, hydrogen peroxides, fatty acids, uh, also fast kill products work very, very well in cleaning, not as broad spectrum as iodine, uh, but doing very well. We'll go through each of these individually as we go down. And many of us are seeing uh, sodium hypochlorite, seeing the chlorine being mixed and used as a dip. Uh, and there is uh, some advantage to cost with that, but not a lot of advantage as far as kill goes. We've got a couple of spots we'll hit on that as we go. So why are there so many dips? Uh, many varieties of problems, but as we all know, T-tip is the first to get the blame in a lot of cases. Something's changed, something's not working, I need to change my T-tip. Uh, so disease prevention is the key measure. Uh, it's hard to make real world comparisons out here on a lot of these things. So people are always looking for other options, allows us to have many different options to, to put out to the farms. And T-tips can be 70% of a farm's chemical costs. So it's really gaining a lot of attention when it comes to cutting costs or uh, looking for something that they think is is going to be that uh, major factor in making things better on a farm. So we need to balance the cost with proof of savings versus the mastitis. So when we're we're looking at a lot of these T tips, it's not just about the, uh, the the cost per gallon. It's how effective is it? Is it helping with mastitis? Can we save a couple of cases of mastitis? It becomes quite expensive in all of that. So cost becomes a real factor. So we can look at dips depending on a dairy's needs and most uh, concern, whether that concern is they've got a lot of bacteria to fight or whether they've got a lot of costs to cut, uh, allowing us to have many different options that we can go through. Some of the things that are changing the T-tip market recently and over the last months and years, uh, raw material cost increases. So iodines, when it comes to, to the raw materials, we're up 25, 30% and more. It's uh, continuing. There's a lot of other industries that are buying iodine that are willing to pay far more for the iodine, causing uh, shortages of product and causing uh, those costs to go up. They're willing to pay additional monies that that uh, definitely makes it difficult for the dairy industry at this point. Propylene glycol and glycerin have seen 50 to 100 percent gains in in pricing on raw materials. So that definitely comes out to the end of seeing large increases in cost uh, on each of those material shortages. As I mentioned, with the iodine being limited availability because of the usage in so many other industries now as well. And freight costs. Uh, we all see what is happening with freight costs around the country. So freight rates increasing, fuel surcharges being added to it, and shortages of available loads, the shortages of truck drivers, all forcing those costs to go up. Uh, and around the country, farm sizes are increasing. A lot of uh, dairies are closing. While we still have a broad range of sizes from small to large farms, uh, it, it is a changing market. And depending on where you are in the country, some are worse than others that way. Uh, it's forcing lower cost options, uh, fewer customers to work with and fewer bases to go after. So that is definitely causing changes to the cost of the market that way. And some of the new products that are coming out, automated sprayer systems, uh, where we have been for a number of years using foamers and using 
using application methods that are allowing us to use a higher cost dip at a lower cost um, at, at a, a higher cost dip at a lower volume. We are now seeing uh, higher volumes with these sprayers where the cows are walking over them and you can run higher volume dips through it. So it's a less focused application with that. So you're using more of it and uh, increasing consistency when they're set up correctly, reducing of uh, labor costs uh, is definitely causing them to be a lot more available out there. So when we're looking at the products that are going to run through those, the costs are becoming a real concern for those automated systems. And then concentrate systems. There's a lot more uh, better options for systems that are running concentrate products, a lot more consistent products. So where concentrates have been on the market for a lot of years, they seem to be becoming more and more prevalent. And when we look at this list to see farm sizes increase, freight costs increasing, uh, raw materials and shortages, the Concentrate products have become far more uh, desirable in a lot of markets. So just to give a little bit of an idea, this was a DeLaval estimate of market share back in 2018. So it's a few years old, showing some of the details that way. Um, those uh, numbers are changing rapidly as time moves on here. So the iodine was showing a 65% of the market. If we were to take that back to 10 years before that, I think that that number would be even higher, looking more into the, the 75, 80% of the market, possibly even more. Uh, so it's been slowly eaten away. Just a quick view on uh, what we're seeing in today's trends. Uh, basically, this is showing 2019 to 2022. And the two up there on the top are chlorine dioxide and iodine. So the iodine sales percentage of sales, this is not the amount of iodine that's being sold, but the percentage of the sales um, of the heat dip products, you're seeing the chlorine dioxide taking a higher factor in this. And what this doesn't take into consideration is that there are a lot more concentrate products in the chlorine dioxides than there have been in the iodine. So if we were to break this rate down into a full ready to use product, uh, that would be an even farther gap between the two. And then we add in all of the other available products. Uh, you can see those are slightly moving up as well. And I think as we continue with some of these price changes, we're going to see some drastic changes on everything on these uh, markets going forward, be uh, more and more. So gaining a lot more acceptance on the non-iodine side. And just to hit on the fact that this is uh, more than just a heat dip program, this is a complete program. Um, a complete mastitis control program is really what's needed in these cases. The TTIP is just one part of it. Uh, so we want to make sure that when we're fighting these mastitis bugs and these mastitis issues, we're looking at everything from the environment, milking procedures, TTIP, of course, included in here still, dry cow therapy milking equipment, and handling infected cows. Uh, so today, of course, we're hitting on the TTIP aspect of it, but we do need to keep in mind that when we're talking to dairymen or you're, you're a dairyman on the dairy yourself looking at these things to say, what else could be contributing to the issues and what other problems can we take away from the mix to help make things better and help our TTIPs be more effective and help us be uh, better effective managing the cows. A few of the mastitis causing organisms that we're going after, uh, of course, we have both environmental and contagious. Uh, these are just a few. There's over 30 uh, on, on these lists here that uh, we can be fighting and have to deal with that are, that are causing mastitis. So when we look at our T-tips, we need to make sure we are using ones that are going to go after the organisms in the best fashion. So mastitis and T-tip, mastitis is the number one disease problem impacting dairy farmers when it comes to economics of it. They said 30 plus microorganisms known to cause mastitis, uh, and there's seemingly as many T-tips as there is uh, organisms causing mastitis. 
different variations of kills and such that way. Uh, somatic cell count goes up, no quality and premiums tend to go down. And we can factor all of the costs of treatment, not just the cost of the T-tip into all of this. When it comes to mastitis, we got to look at how much milk is lost, how much treatment costs, uh, what the cost of that milk loss is, the labor and vet costs included in all of it. And you can take these factors here and figure up your cost of case of mastitis on every one to, to look and see, hey, we're costing this much at, on mastitis. So if we've got a three, four, 500 cow dairy that has a couple of cases of mastitis a month, how much can we save by just eliminating one or two cases uh, per dairy? That a lot of times can offset the cost for a more effective kill dip uh, rather than just going in with the best priced option. And another factor before we get into the actual T-tips themselves is does the application method matter? Uh, we can use spray, foam, dip cup, automated spray systems, brush systems, wipes, heat liners uh, being applied through the heat liner. The reality of it is each one of those uh, is going to work in different aspects of it. But how can we make them all work? Uh, by looking at a few key factors. Is there enough product on every tee? Is the product too wet or too dry? So look, looking at the product on every tee, if we're spraying, are we spraying at an angle that is going to give us coverage across the whole bottom of that tee and get as much uh, coverage as we can? Or if we're foaming, are we foaming a product that is so wet that our cost savings isn't there for the foam that we're just putting a bunch of it down onto the, the floor or the deck and not getting the value out of it? Or are we too dry? where when we're allowing that time for kill, that it's not dry enough, not getting that liquid aspect of it onto the teat to give us the best kill that is there. Uh, it, it's a good balancing act to get into the right position with that. And uh, is the application consistent? Is it being put on every time? Is the, the, the staff getting it on with consistency? Is the robot arm or the sprayer in, pointing in the right direction? Whatever it might be. And how is the coverage? Is it complete coverage? And in the end, is the teat clean and dry? That's really the factor that we're looking for, is that clean and dry teat uh, that's been disinfected. A little bit of information on iodines. Uh, it is the most common teat dip that is dropping now, but it's still, at this point, it's still uh, the most common. Uh, it's oxidizing fast-acting disinfectant against bacteria, fu virus, fungi, and spores. And a uh, few, few other details on here. It's dissolved in water. It is complex, but unbound form. It's not antimicrobial. An uncomplexed iodine or free iodine provides the antimicrobial activity by oxidizing. So if we're talking free iodines, that's usually in the 6 to 12 ppm range. We have a little bit of information as we go through this a little farther about free iodine and how that, that uh, applies on the T-dip uh, or on the iodine dips. And then surfactants and detergents in the iodines that are complexing agents to remove protective oils, the teeth skins. Here in the US, it's mostly half percent and one percent iodines. Uh, there are some quarter percent. And I think with some of the price changes and quick spray methods and such that we're looking with a lot of the automation, uh, we may be seeing more in the quarter percent iodines as time goes on with the iodine. So our products in the iodine lineup, Bovipro, uh, we have that formulated in both a half percent and one percent iodine. Uh, provides superior softening and conditioning. It's formulated with Ioplex. That's our proprietary process that provides steady, stable supply of free I available iodine. Uh, remains effective during freeze and thaw, and it quickly kills mastitis. Uh, multiple formulations available, so we can get that in. in uh, several different versions for you as it's needed. You're looking for a 1%, 2% or 1%, 10%. We have, we have all those available. So our smart dip is our economically priced version. Uh, that too is a fast acting formula. Uh, it's our most economical 1% iodine. It's also available in the half percent as well. 
this is formulated with the Ioplex, the same as uh, the the uh, Mova Pros are. Uh, does have some additional aspects to it that allow us to make this at a very economic price, and it remains effective again during the freeze thaw cycles, quickly killing still. And this does have the highest amount of available free iodine because of the way that we make it. So just a little bit of information on our free iodine study. So compared a couple of products together in our study, and this study was to determine the amount of free iodine generated by each of the dips. Uh, been well established by the amount or total available iodine in the T-dip. is free iodine that is antimicrobial responsible for the efficacy of the dip. So with it having that 5,000 to 10,000 ppm of total iodine, which is our half percent and one percent, five ppm or less of the antimicrobial free iodine that's responsible for the killing. It's an instantaneous process where that free iodine is constantly moving over, but it's that little bit at a time that keeps moving and allows for that kill just uh, on the T-tips, and it's very quick in doing that. So gives the details on how the study was conducted. And this is our study findings. So basically, we're showing that our smart dip compared to just one of the others that are out here, the available free iodine is at 5 ppm from backstop, where our uh, smart dip, a very similar product, is at the 24 ppm free iodine. So uh, the study was validated and checked on, and uh, we, we are very proud of the fact that our smart dips do have a very high amount of free iodine and work free. So did want to hit on those iodines just to give you some information as to uh, uh, where we stand with iodine, that it is available, it is here. Uh, it, it is, again, it's the number one on the market, uh, but that is a very close second to several of the others out here. And if we were to mix the non-iodines together, they at this point would easily surpass the amount of iodines. So the fact there are so many available versions, uh, kill agents and such now, allows us to really have a lot more to look at. So, so our, our peroxide-based products, when we, we looked at these, they're broad spectrum, uh, mixed solutions have good synergistic effect in disinfection. So we're using lactic acid with the peroxide, uh, giving a, a dual kill aspect that way, and also a little bit more conditioning. The lactic acid that's in there. Uh, real big advantage of peroxide is it has, it says good foaming action. That should probably say great foaming action. Most peroxide dips do very, very well with their foaming and cleaning. Uh, they have an extended contact time, volume savings because of that foam. It hangs on the teats and does a good job of uh, doing that cleaning. It's, it has some excellent cleaning properties and it's very effective as a pre dip because of that, because of using it for the cleaning. Uh, little bits given up in the fact that it is uh, not as broad spectrum as the iodine, but in a good dairy, a good situation, this can be offset by the ability of cleaning. If you're doing a good job of getting that cleaning off uh, and, and having good clean teats, it does very, very well. So uh, many positive benefits for skin health, does a little exfoliation of the outer skin layer. So it is uh, keeping that dead skin off, helping to keep those teat ends clean. And the negative properties, of course, on here are it's a little sensitive to sunlight in extreme temperatures. So storage of it, you want to make sure that you're taking care of it in uh, storage. That way it's a little, little bit more sensitive. You want to make sure you got it tucked away in your utility rooms. And such that way. Um, and the active is not as effective under high organic matter container. It does get used up quicker in that sense. But that's where the cleaning properties work very, very well in a hand-in-hand -hand basis of it. Peroxide dips tend to be very cost-effective. So if you are looking at the fact of saying, I am not doing uh, the uh, dip strip dip method because it's too costly to do it a second time, looking at a low-cost, uh, great cleaning product like peroxide-based product helps you get that teat clean put a little bit on there for the after effect of the disinfecting, and you can do a good job of killing and cleaning with this. So our peroxide-based offerings, our PeroxyGuard, uh, it's formulated with a 1% hydrogen peroxide, and that's, uh, of course, killing bacteria safely and effectively. 
contains several surfactants which produce a rich debris lifting foam and provides a fast effective kill. The peroxide kill is half the time of the iodines. Where the iodines you want to be on for that 30, realistically 45 seconds for kill time, the peroxide products, um, it's that time, 15 to 20 seconds kill time. So depending on what your routine is, if you get that dip on there, you can uh, move a little quicker with it. So it's pH balance formula is mild and non-irritating. Not all peroxides are the same. Uh, ours is very well balanced. Uh, and, and and has done a great job of being mild, non-irritating, and well, well-liked product. So fatty acids, lactic-based products, uh, and, and a few other fatty acids as well. So part of the cow's natural defense mechanism against uh, mastitis causing organisms and its mixed solutions to have synergistic effects in disinfection. Got a lot of positive benefits associated with it, like good skin, care, quick acting, it's highly compatible with emollients, a uh, lot, lot of uh, easy to use blending and mixing on this one. So again, fast effective kill, half the time of the iodine, and it's not as broad spectrum kill as iodine, but adequate for most standard conditions that way. Uh, you will see uh, very similar properties to this as with the hydrogen peroxide. A couple of our Fatty acid lactic P-dips are Aura. Uh, lactic acid and glycerol monolaurate have uh, very broad, spe very good broad spectrum kill. Uh, every component con contributes towards improved skin condition. So the lactic acid, all of that is working towards skin conditioning as well. So lactic acid hydrates, nourishes the skin while penetrating and exfoliating the dead skin cells, allowing for the regrowth. The three-part emollient system, including lanolin, with uh, hydration and reinforces uh, the lipid barrier, and it's available as a barrier pre-post dip and as a concentrate, so it's uh, available in several several forms. Prep 8X works great as a pre-dip. Uh, it's a unique combination of lactic acid and alkylate sulfonates. Excellent detergency. Again, very similar to the peroxide in the fact that it's going to have a very good foam, uh, very excellent cleaning properties in that. And the formulations are carrying 2% uh, lactic acid, so great, again, for exfoliation, hydrating the skin. And we have a couple of different emollient packages available with concentrates and such as well. So that's our this is our ultra soft product. This one is great as a barrier, uh, effective against both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. 14% uh, emollient package, very, very gentle, works very, very well. Uh, not a lot to say about this one. This one is just a very good, very uh, gentle product that we've seen work well. For hexidine based, so this is a product, again, that's been used a lot for uh, warts and herpes. Got a lot of positive benefits for the skin, uh, known for treating the herpes and warts. Available in a few different concentrations, uh, half percent, one percent. And real issue with this one is it's ineffective against gram-negative bacteria like serratia and pseudomonas. Uh, those products can survive in the dip, dip itself. So if you're fighting those uh, algae-like product problems that are causing mastitis or you have water quality issues with those things in it, it's best to pick a different dip. Uh, not as broad spectrum as the iodines again, uh, but this is a very gentle dip. So if someone's allergic to iodines or has a lot of issues with handling a lot of the different products, this one can work well in that uh, and, and has its place. Generally not used across the board. So a little bit, just threw an extra slide in here on ulcerative mammalitis. So talking a little bit about the, the warts and herpes and those types of things that come. Uh, it's an infection in the skin and the teats. It can be in the dairy cattle caused by herpes virus. Symptoms are lesions that spread over the entire udder uh, and can be in the mouths of the nursing calves. So you can see those blisters. You see those scabs, those bad spots on it. 
One thing I wanted to note here is the treatment. There's no specific treatment available. Infected cows shouldn't be separated. This particular statement uh, coming from some studies that we've looked shows iodine dips may help disinfecting the teats to prevent the spread of disease. Doesn't say anything about the chlorhexidines. Uh, it's an amalian, an amalian utter cream can also help speed the healing of it. So once it's on the farm, it's very difficult to eliminate and we need to be taking good measures to, to, to work with it. The chlorine dioxide or chlorhexidines are known for treating this. Uh, but in reality, when you look at a, a list like this, you can see that the chlorhexidines will do it, the iodines will do it. And when it comes to using emollient utter creams and such like that, really put emollients to your warts and herpes and such that way. Make sure that whatever dips you're using have a very, very good emollient package. That's going to be the, the best thing for helping to treat those sores and those problems. Uh, and if you want to give the or hexidines to try. We have seen some effective change with a high emollient uh, chlorine dioxide as well. And again, studies showing that iodines will do it as well. So our chloridine, available in half percent and one percent, uh, adheres well and stays active for a good long time. So last one I have on here is our chlorine dioxide. So our chlorine dioxide T-tip formula, sodium chloride, plus the acid equals fluorine dioxide, and then we have a DDBSA in there as well. Ours are using lactic acid as the activator. Um, so benefits of chlorine dioxide products, the sodium chloride plus acid equals chlorine dioxide. Again, the uh, acidium, acidified sodium chloride is another name for uh, chlorine dioxide, so a couple different ways it's known, and it's killing through the cell membranes. It basically inactivates the bacteria from the inside out, uh, prohibits anaerobic and aerobic bacteria resistance. So we're doing very, very well. Anything greater than that 600 log or 600 ppm, we are at a very high log kill at 15 seconds. So very quick, very effective, uh, works very, very well, and probably the closest out there as far as broad, broad spectrum close to uh, the iodine network. So as effective on contagious mastitis as iodine from a Irish study done last year, uh, showing on streptococcal and staphylococcal, and then kills broad spectrum bacteria, works independently from pH. So it's ideal on farms with high organic loads, uh, not affected by environmentals. So this is working very, very well, where some of the others we saw were the high organic loads were gonna be a, an issue, the chlorine dioxide, works and continues to kill through all of that. So this is nothing like chlorine. Uh, the name gives a little bit of a deceptive feel to it there, but it is nothing like chlorine. So the lactic acid activator, uh, that is our product that we're using. So we've got the alpha hydroxy acid, exfoliating dry skins, it's helping with the hyperkeratosis, and it's considered a skin conditioner. So competitors a lot of times will be including this in their conditioning package percentage. We do not. Our conditioning package percentage is including just the added conditioners that we're putting. In. So just hitting a little bit on that chlorine versus chlorine dioxide. We're showing the couple of options here for uh, chlorine dioxide. The, you, you can see as you look down the list here, uh, they're both an oxidizer. The chlorine dioxide is unbound with organics where the chlorine does bind with them, uh, effectively killing, them off, killing off the chlorine at that point. And it works independent of pH, where the chlorine is ineffective on a pH higher than eight doesn't bind with the carbons, the chlorine dioxide uh, binds with the, on the chlorine and already at a neutral pH versus requires acid to neutralize. Kills from the inside with the chlorine dioxide and kills from the outside from the chlorine. The biggest factor that we need to be looking at when it comes to T-tip, uh, kills and disables in 15 seconds, where the kill time for E. coli and with chlorine is a minute. Uh, 
and you can see they're on crypto 10 days. Nobody can wait that long in our industry. So our chlorine dioxide T-tips, uh, here's just a few of the first part of our line. We've got extra blue, extra guard, and extra seven. Uh, these are powerful germicides, contains the extra blue as a 6% emollient package with, with lanolin. The extra seven, it's all the benefits of extra blue, but with some additional emollients and our extra guard. Uh, that's our barrier uh, as a thin film barrier. So giving a good quick dry, even for a barrier product uh, without the residual tackiness and works very, very well performing that second skin. Show a little bit of the details on just one of those three products, the extra blue uh, with a little bit of the data on it. So mixing rate. One to one on this, a Maya package, 6%, 4% glycerin, 1% lanolin, 1% propylene glycol, has uh, 1,700 to 2,000 ppm of uh, kill. And, and as we stated earlier, that is good all the way down to 600 ppm for killing in the, that really strong log kill range. Uh, and we started a higher rate because we know that over time it will eventually drop but we're looking for that good heavy kill even in those organic loads and to be able to work with it so product life of 24 hours uh, usage for both pre and post and comparable products showing a few of the comparables out there from uh, 4xla utter gold gladiator vanquish all, all competitors in this one and it's got a higher ppm so some of the marketing strengths it's got lanolin ddbsa for additional kill Good blue color, very strong looking, uh, very easy to see. Makes a great foam and doesn't do a lot of stain. The other side of our line of T-tips is the XT line of T-tips. These are ex made as extended time T-tips, made into once they're mixed to last a little bit longer. Uh, we have these available in a barrier, in a pre-post, uh, and then in a couple of concentrates in uh, XT Ultra and XT 22C. So our concentrates can be concentrated all the way down to a one to one to 56 ratio, uh, giving you a good pre dip kill. Uh, very effective as far as getting it out there can be added uh, malleant packages to it and making it a pre dip or a post dip option at a good effective cost. So it's economical alternative to uh, iodines and working very, very well for keeping those costs down uh, and still giving you a very broad spectrum kill, very quick kill, uh, very good products in that. Available in the XT Barrier and XT Armor, two different versions of our barrier products, uh, one carrying a little quicker drying uh, film than the other, uh, but a couple of different options. We can definitely help you out to find the right one that works for you. Again, we'll just hit on one of the products here as far as uh, some of the more in-depth details on it. Our XT1 pre-post, the XT products versus the extra products that I showed on the last slide have a slight different formulation. So this one is a little bit longer lasting. So we start at an 11 to 1300 ppm range. This is giving us an ability to uh, work well and hold it a, at a good PPM for a longer period of time. Because this is lasting multiple days, we don't need to start out at that higher uh, 1,700 to 2,000 PPM range. Works very, very well in this range. Again, killing it, it strengths down to that five to 600 PPM range at, at high uh, kill rates. Comparable products on this one would be Valiant uh, and Encore. And marketing strengths, we're definitely holding PPM for multiple days. Uh, we don't put an actual number of days there. We can discuss that based on farm needs and such because, of course, uh, heat, temperature, conditions can all cause that to vary, whether we're mixing it in the dead of winter or the middle of a 110-degree day in a utility room can, can cause some uh, strength changes in that. So uh, emollient packages are really strong, strong colors to that. It's year-round usage. Great product running through robots. We're seeing this with a lot of success on a lot of robot farms, and it def gives a good, clean, soft eats, great exfoliating. XT22C, this is uh, one of our concentrate products, same PPM range when mixed to the concentrate, uh, still holding for multiple days, 
less handling and freight because of price, great cost savings for small to medium farm size farms. And when we go to our larger farms, this one uh, works well in the sense that it's our most concentrated, one to one to 43 up to 58 mixing rates. Uh, emollient packages can be from half a percent uh, and, and we can add uh, additional emollient package to that if we want to be able to to work with that. So it can be blended with additional emollients, uh, holds the PPM again for multiple days. It's less handling and freight because you can take one barrel of this product of parts A and B and make uh, uh, totes and totes of this. So great for foam dip or spray, and it's available in multiple colors or even without color if you're using it in a, a uh, spray over a, a deck spray application where you, you don't need color at all. Comparable products would be the GEA, IntelliBlend chlorines, and Valiant Free, uh, and products like those. So, RTU versus concentrate. Basically, just wanted to give some some hits on that because concentrates are becoming more and more popular, uh, and people seem to be polarized one side or the other as to whether I love RTU ready to use products or I love the concentrates because of the the flexibility it gives me. But if we look at the RTU, the positive for it, it is the best practice for top quality. Uh, it's made in a plant in superior conditions, leaves room for strong, effective product variables that way that uh, we don't have that because it's it's made in the top level of conditions. So least amount of work for the dealerships and for the uh, the farms as far as preparation. There's no mixing, no anything to be done. It just comes and you put it out there. Uh, Chlorine dioxide, you may have to mix the two parts together, but that's it. No ad added water, no uh, relying on additional pumps and, and rates of that. So limits the opportunity for on-farm variables, water quality pump issue. The RTU negative, cost of product, uh, co container costs. Containers are becoming more and more expensive, probably double what they were a year ago now. So every container that we send out uh, is, is in that cost. So if we can reduce those costs, it definitely gets better. Freight costs, if we look at it in the sense with RTU, we're moving a lot of water around. If we can send that concentrated and use on-farm water, the costs a lot of times now are overcoming the positives for the RTUs. And then uh, repeated trips, meaning that if you're a dealer, you're having to visit that farm several times for high volume accounts. If you're the high volume account, you're having to keep an eye on your dealer to make sure that they are keeping stuff in there for you. And the concentrate positives, the least cost-based on the amount of volume in one container. Uh, allows for varied product costs for seasonal environmental. So you can adjust very quickly and easily how strong your PPM you're going to be or what kind of emollient package you're going to use based on the weather or the seasonal conditions, what it might be. It, it's space savings for everybody. And, and just to give a little breakdown on costs, whether you're paying for the freight to get to you or not, that freight it, to get it from one spot to the next is very expensive. So when we look at uh, freight costs to get somewhere, and we're looking at our XT Ultra pre-dip, even at $80 a pallet for freight cost, when we start to factor all of this in and the way that that can be made and concentrate, we're looking at a savings of about 30 cents a gallon, and that's on a minimal freight rate. That $80 a pallet's a low rate. If it's going across the country or going in a long distance, it becomes more and more expensive, way, way beyond that. So looking at those costs and knowing that the, the containers and the freight rates and all that are all part of the the factor, the concentrates start to become very, very uh, valuable. So water quality can be a negative. So uh, it, it can be overcome uh, by taking care of that water quality and doing a little bit. You can uh, take care of it that way. <coughs> Excuse me. Pump systems. So problems in accuracy. So looking at that as a negative, pump systems having problems in inaccuracies on the dairy are always a concern. Uh, we can overcome that with uh, systems that are tracking it and including du duplicate systems and uh, systems that are fully automated through all this. So another thing is farm interference. So if you've got people that are pushing buttons and hitting these all the time, that can be overcome with training, and there can also be pumps that systems that it can be locked out as well. So XT22C and XT Ultra Concentrates, just showing one of our systems here. Uh, this is one that is using a... Part A and B and an emollient package, so we can add 
a couple of our emollient package. Premium 73 includes lanolin. Uh, and then glycerin 80 is now a actual mix of glycerin and sorbitol. Uh, so that one uh, will work as well. We can build formulas on farm. We can adjust the amount of chlorine dioxide for PPM for pre and post. We can adjust the emollient package for uh, the climate and the usage from half a percent to 15 percent. And we can share all of this data because it's all stored in the system. So the systems will shut down if they're not making the correct range of product. Uh, they do. It does use a water meter to tell what's going through there. So as long as the right product is hooked up to the container, if it if it stops pumping product or changes the amount, it will vary and adjust as needed. So it takes away some of those concerns as to a system not working correctly. When it doesn't work, it shuts down and there's some very quick, easy troubleshooting issues. So to summarize, we need to clean the teat first and then apply the dip. Uh, dip is to disinfect teats to reduce mastitis and possibly adding skin conditioning at the same time. And we want to work with the farms to find what's causing the mastitis, not just working with. And iodine has been number one on the chain since the 50s, uh, but due to costs, top quality comparables and the changing farm landscape, non iodines are growing at a rate of up to five times the current rate of iodine. So keep an eye on your other products besides the iodines and uh, take a look at them for options as the costs are changing. You've got a lot of good options out there. So a little bit of kill data. We're about at the end of our time. So we'll just uh, look at this now with, if you have any questions or if there's anything we can answer, please let us know. Thank you everyone for taking your time with us today and uh, seeing what we've got to offer.